What's up guys, Doug Lane here, Fast Lane Car Care as always. Today, we are working on this uh, charger. I don't know, whatever trim it is. Might be able to tell I got the hood up. I got the battery maintainer thing on it. <laughs> Bless me, just in case. Uh, we are using 20% uh, ceramic film on this deal. We're doing everything but the windshield strip, so that's pretty sweet. Uh, a lot of you guys may or may not know this is one of the hardest back windows to shrink. We're gonna find out. I can't remember if I've ever shrank one of these. Uh, I know I just did a white one not too long ago, but we didn't do the back window because they were putting louvers on it or whatever, so I don't know. I'm sure I've done one before, but all I see in the Facebook groups is how difficult this window is and how you get peanuts and you got to turn on the defrosters and start the car and do all this other stuff and if that's what it takes for you then that's what it takes for you but I'm just going to try to do it like I do anything else. No glass aid on this one today. Sometimes that can mess with your shrink, so we're just gonna we're just gonna send it. Um, we are using dry shrink prep on our back glass here. Kind of an H pattern, but not really. Just a line across and we'll let the sides float. That is my preferred method. I'm gonna tell you one thing, I am too short for this stuff. So. This is where you tall guys probably have an advantage. That right there should be pretty much under the third brake light. Uh, so that there that I'm pointing at is probably going to get cut out. Whoops. I got to pause for a second, guys. I got to get a little stool. Okay, we're back. Uh, might help a little bit. Let's see. One thing I found, you can kind of split up your little finger or your bigger fingers into little fingers, but just kind of shrinking a head can really benefit you. Let the heat gun and the airflow do a lot of the work. Also keep in mind that even though this is a GeoShield Apex and it shrinks phenomenally uh, for ceramic film especially, it's still ceramic film so you're still going to have to uh, use a little more heat than you're used to probably if you're used to running dye. Eh, this one might be a little too tall, but all we're going to do here, lift this up a little bit, try to stretch it as much as we can, 
try to get rid of a lot of that extra film. You can see we've got a lot of tension here and here. <clears throat> now we're just going to try to equal it out and make it work. I don't know if you guys can see this little like bubble or whatever right there pretty much we just overheated it right here is where our uh, border is so I'm gonna cut that out hit it again Right there, you can see it kind of doing it again, just where we're overheating the film. Again, we're well below the border, so it doesn't really matter. So let's go ahead and hit this top corner. And again, from here over to here, this section right here is all getting cut out. So if you overheat something in here, it doesn't matter. You can cut it out. Not going to be a problem. I don't like to, uh, you know, bank on that, but um, I should have done glass aid so I could show you guys kind of how to cheat. <clears throat> but that's okay. I see a lot of guys trying to go way too fast when they're doing this, uh, especially just starting out. Uh, this is going pretty slow because obviously it's a ceramic. But just take your time, man. Especially if you're just learning. It's not a race. You know, blow a little air under there if you need to reset some stuff. Like the great Rick McIntyre always says, guys. You've got to have a relationship with the film. The film will tell you what it needs, what it wants, where it wants to go. So you just got to figure out how to read that. Uh, let's go ahead and wet check this bad boy. Boom. Oh yeah, she got some tension on her. She got some tension.
Look at that. Just, just from cooling that film off like that, it made it curl. All right. Since the heat gun's over here, we might as well start over here. I do this a lot of times. Uh, just wet check it. If, it. if I think it's gonna give me any kind of trouble, I'll just go ahead and wet check it and shrink the corners one more time. And the edges, basically top and bottom. Being that this is a ceramic film and it's going to require more heat than normal, you know, we'll just go ahead and make sure we shrink it good. What I should have done, I don't know if you guys can tell, but my film is overlapping my seal right here. That always messes with me, it gives me some trouble. I knew I had about three inches, so I wasn't super worried about it on this application, but <clears throat> if you're new starting out, that'd probably be my biggest recommendation is make sure your film, your film is not overlapping your seals or overlapping your paint, anything like that. It just makes it do weird stuff. So this is the way to go. kids we've definitely overheated the film in several spots mainly like down here at the very edge and also up here where it doesn't matter uh, just be wary of that you know if you're, again if you're just starting out This baby will fit in here. Certainly not gracefully. Hold that thought for a second. Oh wait, no. Never mind. We got an NT blade in here. Thought we had an Ulfa. Ulfa blades, in my opinion, are kind of junky these days. I just ever so slightly scrapped some glass yesterday with a spare Ulfa blade that I had laying around. So uh, I shouldn't say a blade. It's not like I had one blade just mysteriously hanging out. I had. I don't know, maybe a quarter of a pack left, and I ran out of NTs, so I was like, ah, you know what, we'll go ahead and use these Ulfas. But I grabbed NTs out of my uh, mobile box, because I ain't got time for jump blades. I'm going to stand up on the tire, and I'm not going to touch the paint. So don't freak out. Well, not with my feet. Put my hand up here so I don't fall. This is one area I feel like glass aid really shines at. Obviously that's what it's made for. But
Now, as you can see, we got some stuff that popped up on the edges, so we're just gonna hit them with a the heat gun one more time. Now you can fix this stuff up on the top, like if you get something on the uh, you know, finger or something that pops up, but down here at the bottom, you're gonna have a really difficult time, so I like to make sure I don't have anything that's gonna fight me along the bottom. Also, just for reference, uh, let me take you off of here for a second. Some of you guys may have never done one of these before. Here's the top of our film. Let's check out how much of a border we have in here. We've got a huge border here, so uh, just pay attention to this cutout for the brake light. If you really want to, you can pull this clean out. It's pretty floppy, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. Uh, however, this window, let me see if I can zoom you out. I don't think I can do that while it's rolling. But uh, we got a pretty good gap on the edges, on the bottom. Um, and then we've got a, you know, you know, good finger width here. So it's not like the pillars are touching the glass. So that's great. Um, this window is filthy, so I am going to spend quite a bit of time prepping it. I'm not going to do anything fancy. I will show you part of it. I'll probably repeat. I'll probably repeat the process twice, honestly. I could tell when I pulled it in and cleaned the outside of the glass. Uh, it just had this like film. It had this nasty stuff on the defrosters. You could really see it. Um, a lot of people get worked up about uh, these defrosters. I say they're really thick and you get peanuts and all of this and that and the other and that's why you gotta turn the defrosters on and all this other stuff. Like I said, we're just gonna see if we can do it the way we normally do it and see how it works. So, <clears throat> all we're gonna use is our bulldozer. We're gonna use some squeaky monkey rewind to raw. Steel wool scrub pad. Now if you see this, it's kind of furry and stuff. Some people really don't like these because they fall apart. In my experience, they only start to fall apart after you use them a handful of times, so I don't know. In like six years and hundreds and hundreds of cars done, I've only found a piece of steel wool, I think three times ever in a back window. And all three of those times, I was able to fish them back out. Not ideal, obviously it's better if you don't use it, but I'm gonna show you how we're gonna get away with uh, hopefully not having any steel wool. So regular, just regular plain old, oh my goodness. Plain old microfiber towels. Um, you know, what I just showed you and shop towels. We'll use a couple of those too. All right guys, let me fill you in on what's happening here because like a dummy, uh, you can't hear me inside the car. Um, all we did was took our Squeaky Monkey Rewind, uh, put a dollop of it, you know, maybe a little bit, like a nickel-sized amount. We went ahead and put that on our scrub pad, dispersed it throughout the window, and went ahead and scrubbed the window like we would with anything else. And then wipe it down with the shop towel, which I'm going to show you, or uh, microfiber, I'm sorry, which I'm going to show you how much junk gets pulled off of it. And then you can make another pass and use a shop towel to sweep your edges, uh, so that way hopefully you get any steel wool lint. And then you just squeegee it like normal.
this is why your shit don't stick. That's just from that one little section right there. Now, yes, yeah, some of this is going to be the soap from the pad, um, but 99% of this is just oxidized junk off the defrosters plus regular dirt and grit and crud. If you just spray this down, uh, hit it with a scrub pad, like a, a white or a blue, and then go ahead and squeegee it and stick it, it ain't going to stick. So you just saw me switch to a clean towel and use the bulldozer just to get the very bottom a couple inches and the edges. And that's why we do that. <clears throat> now all I did there was a little bit of rocket science. I just used my pressure from my keg to blow anything that might be hanging out there down out of the way. And uh, just gonna miss the air here. Take our suede blade. I'm gonna squeegee around the top and around the sides. So that way when we spray, lift this release liner and spray, stuff doesn't come running back down into our film. Get put back to where it was. Now, if you wanted to, you could squeegee that window again. Heck, you could do it a third time if you wanted to. Here lately, I've been experimenting with, uh, you know, just ways to do this, and I feel like really saturating the glue um, works out better than really saturating the glass, because the more water you get in the back, or even doing full windshields, it seems like more contamination either comes in from the sides or the headliner or whatever, and, uh, you know, obviously that's not great. Should've, should've thought about that and have our step stool right there, but.
All right, so here's where our shop towels come into play. You can't see it, but we have one little side finger right there, about, about like that. And we got one up here in the dot matrix. So all we're gonna do is push out our, uh, push out our extra moisture and absorb it with a hard card and a shop towel. I don't know if you guys can see it, but we got two, two or three little bubbles right here. We got no peanuts on the glass. All our side fingers are gone. We are good to go. All we're gonna do, you could do this two ways. You could sit and wait for this to dry, uh, or you could apply heat right now. I'm going to apply heat right now, get it to tack, push it out with the uh, bulldozer, but, um, you know, nothing wrong with just waiting either. Can't wait to get my hair cut later. Um, nothing wrong with just waiting if you don't have a torch. Uh, heat gun's gonna take a long time, but you can do the same thing. Um, I'm just gonna torch it real quick, get it warm, push it out, and then that way, while I do the rest of the car, if anything else pops up or anything else happens, I can address it then. Hopefully, we don't have any more issues, uh, and this car will be ready to go here pretty soon. So, that's how you do the infamous Dodge Charger back window. At least that's how I do it. You see it works. And uh, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you on the next one.